Let's go ahead and turn our attention to the supply side of the market with elasticity of supply, which measures the responsiveness of suppliers to changes in prices. So a lot of the things that we talked about on the demand side with price elasticity of demand will still hold true with price elasticity of supply. We just change up on what side of the market we are taking a look at. So when we have a formula for the elasticity of supply, it's going to be the same exact one that we sort of taken a look at. It's the percentage change in quantity supplied divided by the percentage change in price. Elasticity of supply is going to be denoted with a shorthand ES. And once again, the midpoint formula is going to become very, very apparent within this elasticity as well. So here, take a look at the elasticity of supply. So elasticity of supply. And once again, we have the shorthand ES. And the only thing that really changes in terms of this one is instead of percentage change in quantity demanded, it's going to be the percentage change in quantity supplied. So here, just the supply side of the market. But the same midpoint formula we've written, written down quite often already. So you guys should have it in the back of your minds. Q1 minus Q0. Q0 plus Q1 divided by 2 with the brackets. And this is going to be our numerator, which gives us the percentage change in quantity supplied. So percentage change in QS. On the denominator, we have the percentage change in price. And we have the typical P1 minus P0 divided by P0 plus P1 divided by 2 with the brackets. And then this will give us the percentage change percentage change in price. And this is going to be the, for the same exact good. So we're taking a look at the same exact good in this scenario. Same midpoint formula that we've seen several times already. And one thing to note about this elasticity of supply is that this is always going to be a positive number. We'll always have a positive in the numerator and a positive in the denominator or a negative in the numerator and a negative in the denominator. And that's just for the law of supply. Remember the law of supply tells us that there's going to be a positive relationship between quantity supply and prices. So here, when we change the price, when we increase prices, suppliers are going to want to supply more. So positive over positive gives us a positive number. If price ever goes down, that means suppliers are going to be less willing to sell. So quantity supply goes down. A negative over a negative will give us a positive number as well. So here, we don't need to take the absolute value because it's always going to return us a positive number. So with all of this in mind, you may be wondering exactly what do these specific numbers mean? And thankfully for our purposes, we have the same exact sort of intuition built up on the demand side as we do on the supply side. So here, three different values that the supply elasticity can take. It can be less than one, which indicates the good is seen as inelastic. Suppliers and firms are very price insensitive to a, to a, basically a good. So we can change the price a lot, but the quantity supplied isn't going to change all too much. It can be greater than one, meaning that we have an elastic good, meaning that the firms and suppliers are very price sensitive. They are and when, with a very small change in price, they are going to change, uh, change their quantity supplied by a lot. And then we have ES exactly equal to one where we have a unitary elastic good where the percentage change in quantity supplied is exactly matched by a percentage change in price. So here, the same intuition, the same sort of setup that we had on the demand side is going to be holding true on the supply side as well. And you may be wondering exactly what the graphs or what the sort of supply curves are going to look like under each of these circumstances. And we can go ahead and take a, we can actually have a little bit of a tip or a trick on the supply side that we may not necessarily have on the demand side. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So a little bit of a trick on the supply side to see what type of supply curve we are taking a look at. Is it more elastic? Is it more inelastic? Or is it more unitary elastic? So here, let's give you three different supply curves. Give you one right here, one right here, and then one right here. So three different supply curves. We have S1, S2, and then S3. Of course, price and quantity on these axes. So let's go ahead and take a look at S1 first. Supply curve number one. We notice that the supply curve number one is kind of a very steep line. And basically says the steeper the line, it tells us that we are going to be a little bit more price inflexible or firms and corporations are going to be so. So the steeper the line, the more inelastic the supply becomes. So an elastic line right here. So here, S1 is the most inelastic one out of these three that we do have. And once again, inelastic curves are going to be steep. So steep line that we have right here. And in terms of 
Uh, the trick that we're talking about, where exactly does our supply curve intersect? It intersects the quantity axis. So anytime we have a supply curve that intersects the quantity axis, we're going to say that this is going to be more of an inelastic good. So here it crosses the quantity axis. So a little bit of a trick for you anytime you want to see exactly how elastic or inelastic the supply curves are. For S2, however, we notice that the intersects where? It intersects at the origin. So this is going to be our special case where elasticity is going to be exactly equal to 1. So we have unitary elasticity. So unitary elastic. Elastic good. And once again, we notice that with this trick right here, it is always going to be intersecting at the origin. So crosses the origin. And then finally here, of course, S3, that's going to be our flat line right here. So therefore, we have a elastic good. So elastic good. And with our elastic good, it is a flat line, flat line, and it's going to intersect the price axis. So notice here that all three of these supply curves intersect at different regions of our Cartesian plane. So here it crosses over price axis. So with all of this in mind, we already have the same, same sort of setup for elasticity to supply as we did for elasticity to demand. And the last thing that we want to go ahead and take a look at are the determinants of supply. So what exactly makes something a little bit more elastic versus inelastic? And the, there's actually only one that we need to go ahead and take a look at, which is going to be the time period. But it involves a little bit more uh, in-depth supply and demand analysis because we do need to break up into the time periods just a little bit more. So I'll go ahead and see you guys in that particular lecture.